Well, hey there, garbage lovers, and welcome to another trash talking episode of This Show Is Not Rubbish. Today, my head is a little in the clouds, so I thought it might be fun to try and catch one. <clears throat> Maybe if I try to catch one inside of something. Any suggestions, thing? Bottle. Perfect. Thanks, Thing. But before I attempt to bottle a cloud, let's float away amongst some trashy facts. This kind of bottle is called a pet bottle. Now, when I say pet, the first thing that's likely to spring to mind is a tame animal kept as a companion. <coughs> this, of course, is not a tame animal nor would I consider keeping it as a companion. The P, E and T in PET bottle stand for polyethylene terephthalate, which is the plastic that it's made from. On the other hand, this is Peanut, an actual pet, a tame animal that I keep as a companion. Yes, you are. You're my little buddy, aren't you? You're my little peanut butter. Say hello to peanut butter, everyone. Cloud isn't the only weather-inspired phenomena that can be caught in a bottle. Give these bottles a little spin and, hey presto, a watery version of a tornado. A tornado is a rapidly rotating column of air that connects the clouds of a thunderstorm with the ground below. The opposite of a tornado is a windstorm called a derecho. Winds in a tornado twist, while winds in a derecho travel in straight lines. Have you ever heard the phrase, to catch lightning in a bottle? It means to do something virtually impossible. It's thought that this phrase originates from the experiments of the American polymath Benjamin Franklin, who attempted to trap lightning in a jar by flying a kite into a thunderstorm. Franklin didn't catch lightning, but he did manage to pick up ambient static charge from the air and contain it in a Leyden jar, which is an old device used to trap and store an electrical charge. Oh, success! Lightning in a bottle! So there's actually heaps of ways to trap a cloud in a bottle. Today, I'm going to show you two ways that you might like to try out yourself. Method one. Here's what you'll need. A pet bottle plus its cap, some warm water and a match. First up, I need to roughly three quarters fill the pet bottle with the warm water. The next step is to swirl the water around a little to make sure the air inside the bottle is nice and moist. That is well and truly saturated with water vapor. Water vapor is what we call water as a gas. Now, when I squeeze the bottle, the air in the top of the bottle is squashed a little and as a result, it will increase in temperature a little. Let go, the air springs back and the temperature will drop. Now, as you've probably noticed so far, no cloud. That's what this match is for. Clouds form around small particles in the air, particles of dust or soot or sea salt or any one of a whole stack of other itty bitty things, including smoke particles. Collectively, we call these particles cloud condensation nuclei or CCNs for short. Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> when I squeeze the bottle, the pressure and temperature inside the bottle increase. Let go, and the pressure and temperature drop. As the temperature drops, water condenses around the smoke particles. That is, the water turns from a gas into a liquid, forming little water droplets and a cloud. Squeeze again, 
and as the temperature increases, the liquid droplets evaporate. That is, they turn back into an invisible gas and the cloud vanishes. Of course, if you want to try this experiment yourself, then you'll need one extra special piece of equipment, an adult, to help you out with the match. Fire should always be treated with caution and respect. Our second method of cloud creation is a little trickier, but well worth all the fiddling about. Here's what you'll need. A pet bottle, a pump with a needle fitting, the kind you use to pump up a football or other sports balls, a rubber stopper that fits into the mouth of the pet bottle, and a little rubbing alcohol. Before we can create our cloud, there is a little bit of prep that has to be done. Step one is to very carefully drill a hole through the rubber stopper. Step two is to insert the needle from the pump fitting through that hole. And step three is to very carefully squirt a little rubbing alcohol into the pet bottle. And now we are set. As I pump air into the bottle, both the pressure and temperature inside the bottle will increase. When I pull out the stopper, in just a moment, the pressure and temperature will suddenly drop. And, oh, instant cloud. On this occasion, it's the rubbing alcohol that evaporates and then condenses to form the cloud. But it's the same idea as our first experiment with the water. It's just that rubbing alcohol evaporates much more easily than water, giving us more available molecules for a much more spectacular cloud. Bam! Cloudy with a 100% chance of fun. So the great big really important question is, once you've supped the last sip from a pet bottle, into which bin should you throw it? It's time to play a little game I like to call, which bin? So our choices as always are, a general curbside waste bin, a curbside recycling bin, a curbside green bin, or some other bin or place. But what do you reckon? Into which bin should we thoughtfully discard our pet bottle? I'll give you a few moments to have a think. So have you thunk of an answer? I reckon you absolutely, definitely, unquestionably, indisputably know the correct answer to this one. Pet bottles go straight into the recycling. Polyethylene terephthalate can be recycled to create new pet bottles, as well as a whole stack of other products, including rope, car parts, carpet, filling for sleeping bags, and even clothing. Plus, pet bottles can be used as a building material. In some places around the world, the bottles are filled with sand or waste or a variety of other materials and then packed together like bricks to form walls. Crushed bottles are even used to construct roofs. Plus, pet bottles can be used to demonstrate roughly a billion awesome science concepts. So I'll definitely be experimenting with these again in the future. Recycling and waste management are evolving sciences and rules vary from country to country, city to city and council to council. Always check with your local council as to what thing should go in which bin. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and then head over to our website and social media pages for more garbagey goodness.